Let's see. We ready? Yeah. All right. Uh, greetings. It's Terry Cole from from Coal Mine Records. I'm I'm here at Portage Lounge, our new studio um, that we're still in the middle of building out. But um, I'm here to talk about the Okonski record, Magnolia, because somebody commented on Instagram and asked about how we recorded the drums. And that was about all the motivation I needed to want to talk about uh, this record, how we made it. And uh, yeah, it's going to get real nerdy, very nerdy. So if you don't care, that's fine. So uh, as far as the general goal for this record, you know, Steve and I talked a lot about it. Um, I don't think we were trying to make a Rudy Van Gelder Blue Note record, but that was certainly like a reference. Um, I think more of the the whole room aesthetic when we were recording this record. Um, you know, a lot of those famous Blue Note records, especially the records from that were recorded in Hackensack, feel like you're just in the room, you know, listening to a bunch of people play. And I think we wanted to try to capture a little bit of that with this record. So, let's go through all the bullshit that we used to record this. So, this record had six tracks. Uh, we, we tracked it to the Tascam 388, which is an eight track, quarter inch machine. Um, we only used six of them. Uh, and we used, let's see, for the kick, we used the, uh, you know, the old, 50, I call them old 57s, it's a sure 545 SD. It's a Unidyne dynamic mic. Um, I'll isolate the track so we can. You know? Boom bat. Just sounds like some boom bat. Uh, for the snare, which we didn't use this very much in the mix, uh, we used the Sennheiser 421. It's very low in the mix. It's just like a little bit of like nothingness. Piano. We use the EV RE16. Um, this was mic'd on the back of the soundboard, right in the center, and it had a really big baffle on it. So, like, the piano is actually one of the few tracks that has pretty good isolation, as you can hear. It's pretty well isolated there. Um, the primary drum mic was this ribbon mic, the Shear 300, which was running through a Warm Audio 412 preamp, pretty hot. So this is where a lot of like the dirt on the drum is coming from, the drum kit. This is overhead. And then maybe the two most important mics. Uh, this is what we used to mic Mike Montgomery on upright bass. Uh, Shear SM5B, it's like a proto type to the SM7. So this was used on the upright and it was used on the room mic. It was overhead over the entire room. I would say that these two, we used two of these. These two mics added probably the most character um, to the recording. Like these two mics, the overhead and the upright are capturing most of what you ended up hearing on the actual recording. Um, so I just turn up the bass mic in the room. It's like most of what this record sounds like. It's just those two mics. And then so all we had to do was like sprinkle in a little bit of that dirty drum, a little bit of Steve's piano, and the kick. And we're pretty much there. So uh, this was a super fun record to wait, make because it was a pretty minimal approach, like not a ton of wild gear was used to make it, but I think Steve, Mike, Aaron, and I are all very, very pleased with how it came out, like the end result. It feels like a record that's like just friends playing. It feels like you're sitting in the room, you know, it doesn't feel like overly dirty or anything like that. So uh, we're gonna go through the new track that just came out recently, Song for My Sister's Son. Uh, so this is the third take of Song for My Sister's Son, which is the take that made the record. So I'll just let it play and I'll mess around with the stems so you can hear them.
So I've got the kick and snare mics pretty much off because there's really not shit happening there. Um, but we'll go through each one real quick. So here's uh, that's the EV RE16. Again, it's pretty well isolated. It's on the back of the the back of the piano soundboard. Here is that ribbon overhead, which is running super hot, and so you can probably hear all the noise that's on this. Which we had to take off. Um, and then here are the two SM5Bs. So here's the one near Mike's on upright. Which is getting like a bunch of room shit too, which is great. And then here is the room that's like basically over top of, it's like probably eight feet above Aaron on drums and Steve on piano. So really, when you add the room and the bass mic, 